describes in here is different rungs. You know, you and your partner. You know, two minds with one intent become so strong that what they will becomes the will of God. It goes on and on. And when we shift it into the context of one mind, one solution, the atonement, one instant when that can be received. Now, <laughs> it's just everything has to collapse into that, that instant. That's what immediate salvation is about. Cause and effect are one. Ideas leave not their source. Time is simultaneous. You know, all of the things, all different ways of saying the same thing. So go back to that sentence. Like to a dream of punishment in which the dreamer is unconscious of what brought on the attack against himself, he sees himself un attacked unjustly and by something not himself. He is the victim of this, quote, something else a thing outside himself for which he has no reason to be held responsible. He must be innocent because he knows not what he does, but what is done to him. Yet is his own attack upon himself apparent still, for it is he who bears the suffering, and he cannot escape because its source is seen outside himself. one sense you could say the old thing about blaming or what could I do or that whole thought reversal of the world is the cause of my suffering. You could say that that would be one major version of it. And then the other one would be people who, the mind when it gets into this thing about the ego made me do it. It's even pulling it away now from the world. And now it's saying that there's this thought system in my mind, the ego. And it's too strong, it's too powerful, it's dictating. It's dictating all my decisions, all my actions. But as if it's, you know, the ego is an entity that, that as well as outside my mind. I may have made it, of course, says that I made this thing up, but I seem to be ruled by it. It seems to be the dictator of, of what I think and say and do. And that has to be questioned as well, because where is the escape? And the devil made me do it. Where is the peace that can come? You know, he says in one point, you know, don't, do not project this to time. Don't, you don't project the ego to anything or anybody else and don't project it to time. Don't even say that I'm, I'm in chains and at some point in the future I will be released from these chains. And even that, which is, could seem to be like a very helpful stepping stone to think there is hope of future release at least, you know, has to be questioned as well because you're still projecting responsibility for the ego to time. You're still projecting the responsibility for the ego to, to the future. Time heals all wounds. In time, I will reach enlightenment. So you're saying it's actually a denial of the decision in the present moment? Yes. Yeah. 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 Everything we do, so to speak, will be looking at everything as always a present decision. And the only places the ego could ever be found would be as being a, a present decision. If you project it to time, it's like, it's like trying to hide it away in linear time. And still concealing the belief that time, linear time is a construction of the ego. that's being held on to 
now, and it has to be let go of now. Another way to say it, too, would be that, you know, that's a metaphor to say that, that the decision for the ego is now, in the sense that the deceived mind doesn't know what now is. It's the belief that it's still present. It's the belief that the past is still present, which is just another way of saying the mind doesn't know what the present is. That's where the I do not know comes in. That's where the every day being open to be shown. To be shown the present. Be willing to desire the holy instant above all else. You know, that's, that's the focus, that's the intention of what we do. So you can see there's a lot of metaphors involved in there. Even when we say in the Instruments for Peace that peace and war or peace and upset are both present decisions, that's still, we're still operating from the same metaphor that there's a right mind and there's a wrong mind and that the mind can vacillate and choose one or the other every instant. You've got to come to the point where you see that that's a metaphor. You cannot hang with that. That, that was, that was artificial construction as well. Now, again, once again, we're coming to the point to say it, to even start to, to begin to grasp it and everything is not to grasp it because as long as there's any level confusion, then the mind has not grasped it. How could the mind have level confusion? It's still not clear of uh, right mind, wrong mind, if, if in discussions there are shreds and bits of backward thinking or level confusion. So the people you meet, you know, it, they may not laugh at that point when you, can, when you start to say, okay, well, you know, I, I too am starting to understand that, that the right mind and the wrong mind, you know, that is a, is a metaphor or construction. However, <laughs> that my teacher has been going with me over and over and from all different angles, coming to really raise up all level confusion to awareness because what good does it do to say the phrase, the truth is all that there is, when if there's still aspects of, of level confusion that haven't been exposed? What do you have? Denial. Yeah, that's what you have. So that's why it's just imperative that we are very thorough, that we, you know, look at everything because you, don't, you certainly don't have the experience of truth is all there is if there's still level confusion in the mind if you're hanging on to per aspects of personhood or aspects of, of things that you still feel like you need to do you have to do that are obligations that are duties that are requirements in this world you're still seeing causation on the screen. That's level confusion. The mind is causative. The screen is not. There is no, there is no aspect. There is no, no aspect to the screen and there is no causation on the screen. As we've gone into discussions with people, as we've traveled around, we've gone into diet, we've gone into exercise. Other times people have talked about yogic postures, amounts of time to sit in the silence, the body, how, how often it's to be bathed, uh, ideal community settings, ideal environments, energy spots, vortexes, backwards, 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 all of it's backwards. 
when you sit down and you go into people about these areas, you know, they can you can come to the words can be spoken, you know, truth is all there is. Truth is true and only true truth is true. That's a common kind of a catchword phrase. What well, sounds great. Well what then when you get into what seems to be daily life and living and so on and so forth, if there are inconsistencies or there's teachings being taught about how often you have to bathe or not bathe to be enlightened or the kind of foods that you're to eat or not eat or the amounts of exercise or the types of m movements of the body or the positions or the times of meditation and all that, wait a minute, <laughs> what? Which is it? Which is it? That denies that the truth is true, and only the truth is true. 